What should voters keep in mind as we move forward to November? It seems like there are so many plates spinning, so many issues out there revolving, orbiting all around us. What do we need to stay focused on? Well, joining me now to discuss this is Matt Carpenter, is the director of FRC Action. Matt, thanks so much for joining me today on Washington Watch. Well, thanks for the invite, Jody. Great to be with you. All right, so we know that there, uh, there may be some in our audience who, uh, quite frankly, may be discouraged by uh, some of the quality of the candidates or issues right now taking place among some can candidates, uh, particularly perhaps in the presidential cycle uh, election. But there's more at stake than just the White House. The White House is, White House is critically important. No one denies that. But that's not the only race that's important, correct? Oh, you're exactly right, Joey. There are 535 uh, members of Congress who every two, four to six years are running uh, for re-election. And, um, you know, as you know better than most, Jody, our founding fathers saw fit to bless us with a, a distributed system of government where not one body has all power. We've got an executive branch, a judicial, a judicial branch, and a, a legislative branch. And Congress is endowed with immense authority to raise and, and, um, and levy taxes to pass legislation, to approve nominees, and, and appoint, um, uh, and, and I guess has an immense investigative power as well, Jody. And, um, you know, we're looking at, at kind of what the battleground is uh, across this country right now. You've got, um, you've got about three toss-up Senate races in Montana, Ohio, um, and also in um, uh, Montana, Ohio, and Pennsylvania. And we've also got 20 to 25 toss-up House races. And what's interesting, Jody, is a lot of these places that are competitive for Congress, it's not a one-to-one -one with places where you expect will be competitive at the presidential level. Everyone's kind of familiar with the seven to eight presidential battleground states. But for voters in California and New York and Montana and some of these other places that aren't going to get a lot of attention at the presidential level, they're going to be able to decide, you know, does Speaker Johnson retain the Speaker's gavel? come 2025? Does Chuck Schumer get to preside over the Senate you know, again? So there's immense power in some of these states that aren't getting a lot of attention at the presidential level. And Americans in places that, like I mentioned previously, um, they got to be looking at their ballot and figuring out, do I have a chance to, uh, to, to pick a new member? And, you know, I think that's so important. Matt, what you just shared. I mean, let, let's just let's just play out the scenario here. And I'm not making any predictions. I don't know what's going to happen. I certainly have my preferences. What I hope happens, but just for sake of discussion here, let's just say uh, that we end up in November with a Harris Waltz administration. Mm -hmm. right, at that point, it is exceedingly important that Republicans at least maintain the House and the Senate, wouldn't you say? I mean, this is part of the checks and balances that we have. If we have, at a time like this, for example, a uh, hard left-leaning administration take the White House, the House, and the Senate, they can do anything they want to do to the American people. So the checks and balances are important. Uh, and, and this goes to underscore that this is much more than just about the White House. Is that what you're saying? You're right, Jay. There's been a lot of attention on sort of the radical track record and the, and the radical platform that we're hearing from the Harris Walls ticket, but not so much attention has been paid to, frankly, what Chuck Schumer is promising to do if he if he gets full control of the of, of the Senate and you get a, a Democrat uh, with the Speaker's gavel. They're promising that they're going to federalize our elections. They're promising that they're going to pass radical anti-religious uh, freedom legislation like the Equality Act, um, they're going to they're going to pass the Women's Health Protection Act. So, Congress is an immense check on not just the executive branch, but just the radical leftist pro-abortion agenda, anti-faith, anti-family agenda to begin with. It's super important that Christians look up and down their ballot and make wise decisions come November. Uh, extremely uh, well said and a great point. Again, it's just the the, the issues are much bigger than one race. It's much bigger than the, the White House, and we, we need to keep that in mind. But even it's bigger than just Congress. I mean, we've even had on the program this evening some discussion about some state referendums. I mean, there's a lot happening on the state levels as well. 
Yeah, you've got five states that uh, that will have pro-abortion, unfortunately, uh, amendments to their state constitution on the ballot. You heard the good news from uh, from um, from Arkansas earlier. Uh, so now you know, take Arkansas off the map, but there's still four states that are considering some kind of ballot measure. We'll see how that pans out in the next few weeks. But you've also got positive um, constitutional amendments that voters can can vote on. Um, measures that would, for example, um, make sure that only U.S. citizens get to vote in American elections. Who would have thought, Jody, that this would be something we'd have to vote on? But I think that's an immense draw for voters concerned about election integrity to overcome their fear of what could happen or what might happen or are the voter rolls purged. Get out and vote for those good be good measures. you got a, a ballot measure in Alaska that would do, a, uh, do away with ranked choice voting. We've seen We've seen how that's panned out where it's been tried. And so that's a very positive development. So there are ballot measures. It's important that voters uh, figure out what's going to be on their ballot, and not just candidates, but they can also vote on policies that will have an impact on future generations. Well, as we wrap up, and we've only got a couple of minutes, uh, Matt, but uh, FRC Action has a lot of voter resources. We've got a lot to help people. Uh, it kind of unfolds some some of that, unpack some of it for our audience to better engage this upcoming election. Sure, we've got we've got resources to help you register to vote. It's important to make sure you're registered to vote at your current address. Uh, we've got resources um, on party platforms, kind of our historical work there. We've also got uh, voter guides. We'll be unrolling voter guides in the near in the near term. Uh, on the, at the presidential level, at the Senate level, uh, key House uh, races, and then also gubernatorial races. We're going to look at the records, look at the statements of these candidates who are running in these key matchups. Uh, we've also got materials um, that'll tell you how your incumbent voted. We've got our scorecard that goes back to 2002. So if you've got a member of Congress who's been hanging out for a couple decades, you can figure out how they've been voting on the issues that I care about. But um, I, would, I would encourage uh, your audience, Jody, text GUIDE to 67742 to get in the waiting list for our voter guides once those are available. All right, text GUIDE, G-U-I-D-E, text GUIDE to 67742. Matt Carpenter, great, great information. Thank you so much for all the work that you do at FRC Action and deeply appreciate you coming on the program this evening to talk about this extremely important topic on multiple fronts. We appreciate it. Thanks for having me, Jody. Great to be with you.